Hello everyone. Welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video we will discuss parts of the shell and tube heat exchanger. In the first part of this video we discussed construction and working of shell and tube heat exchanger. Link of first part of this video is given in the description box. Now in this video we will see various components of shell and tube heat exchanger. So, as we know, shell and tube heat exchanger is a tubular type of heat exchanger. It usually requires less materials for construction. Hence shell and tube exchanger is used. When double pipe exchangers do not provide sufficient area for heat transfer. As we know, the major components of this exchanger are shell, tube, fronted head, rear end head, tube sheet, tie rods, baffles. So, let's see these components one by one. So, the first component is shell. So, shell is the outer covering of the heat exchanger. It is usually a cylindrical casing through which one of the fluids flows in one or more passes. It is commonly made up of carbon steel. It can be of various sizes like it may be cut to the required length from a standard pipe up to 60 cm diameter or fabricated from plates. Then the minimum thickness of a shell made of carbon steel which varies from 5 mm to 11 mm depending upon the diameter. Next component is front end head and rear end head. So these are used for the entrance and exit of the tube fluid. The front end head is stationary, while the rear end head could be either stationary or floating. Depending on the thermal stresses between the tubes and shell, selection criteria for front end head mostly based on cost of the heat exchanger, maintenance and inspection, then hazard due to mixing of shell and tube fluids, and leakage to ambient and operating pressures. Similarly, the major criteria for selection of the rear end head are the allowance for thermal stresses, a provision to remove the tube bundle for cleaning the shell side, prevention of mixing of tube and shell fluids, and sealing any leakage path for the shell fluid to ambient. Then next part of the shell and tube heat exchanger is Nozzles The entrance and exit ports for the shell and tube fluids are called as nozzles. These are pipes of constant cross-section, welded to the shell and channels. They are used to distribute or collect the fluid uniformly on the shell and tube sides. Then the next component is Tube it is the most important part of the shell and tube heat exchanger. The tubes that are placed in a tube bundle inside the shell are either rolled or welded to the tube sheet. Then tube side fluid first enters a header through a nozzle. Then flows through the tubes in parallel flow. Depending on how much time it passes through the tube. There are one pass or more than one pass type of heat exchanger is used. In general, an even number of tube side passes are used. The outside diameter of tubes varies from 6 mm to 40 mm. The tubes with outside diameters of 19 mm and 25 mm are very common. The tube lengths used are 0 0.5, 2 0.5, 3, 4, 5, and 6 m. The wall thickness of tubes is usually expressed in terms of Birmingham wire gauge that is BWG and it depends upon the material of construction and diameter for 19 or 25 millimeters outside diameter tube of mild steel 10 or 12 BWG is common now the next component is tube sheet these are used to hold tubes at the ends a tube sheet is generally a round metal plate with holes drilled through for the desired tube pattern. Holes for the tie rods which are used to space and hold plate baffles. Grooves for the gaskets. And bolt holes for flanging to the shell and channel. A large number of holes are drilled in the tube sheet. 
according to the pitch requirements. Tube sheet thickness ranges from 6 mm to 25.4 mm. For tube outside diameter of 6 mm to 40 mm. To prevent leakage of the shell fluid at the tube sheet. Through a clearance between the tube hole and tube. The tube to tube sheet joints are made by many methods. Such as expanding the tubes. Rolling the tubes. Hydraulic expansion of tubes. Explosive welding of tubes. Stuffing of the joints. Or welding or brazing of tubes to the tube sheet. The leak free tube to tube sheet joint is made by the conventional rolling process. Now next component is. Baffles. Baffles are commonly employed within the shell of a heat exchanger. To increase the rate of heat transfer. By increasing the velocity and turbulence of the shell side fluid. It is also used for structural supports for the tubes. And dampers against vibration. The baffles cause the fluid to flow through the shell. At right angles to the axes of the tubes. To avoid bypassing the shell side fluid. The clearance between the baffles and shell and. The baffles and tubes. Must be minimum. The center to center distance between adjacent baffles. Is known as baffle spacing or baffle pitch. The baffle spacing should not be greater than the inside diameter of the shell. And should not be less than one fifth of the inside diameter of the shell. The optimum baffle spacing is 0.3 to 0.50 times the shell diameter. And the last component is. Tie rods. Tie rods are used to hold the baffles in place. With spaces to position or locate the baffles. Tie rods are fixed at one end in the tube sheet by making blind holes. Usually 4 to 6 tie rods with at least 10 mm diameter are necessary. So that's all about. Components of shell and tube heat exchanger. In the next part of this video we will diacus. Term like tube pitch. Clearance. What is 1-1 one one shell and tube heat exchanger? 1-2 shell and tube heat exchanger. 2-2 shell and tube heat exchanger. Then types of baffles. So keep watching. And if you like my video. Please like. Share. And subscribe to my YouTube channel which is Chemical Edda.